Like most people, I'm really excited for the new Magnolia TV network to come out because we all could use a little bit more Chip and Joanna Gaines in our life, don't you think? <laughs> well, on today's episode, I have three DIYs inspired by Joanna Gaines and her decorating style. So let's get started. Did you notice my new pretty apron? I've been wearing an apron lately to just kind of keep my clothes a little bit cleaner when we're using power tools and working with sawdust. I know that the idea of working with power tools is a little intimidating for some, and I don't want you to feel like that. So I really like this apron because it says powerful, and that is exactly what I'm trying to help you feel is to feel like you are powerful and also it's kind of a little fun play on power tools because I do like to use power tools and I know that that can be intimidating for some and I don't want you to feel like that. I want you to feel powerful when you're using power tools and confident. For today's project we are going to be working with some of the first power tools that I ever worked with and that is a drill and a jigsaw and then I also have an electric staple gun that has like a brad nailing option. We're gonna use that a little bit later. And all of these are really good power tools to start out on if you're trying to gain a little confidence. All right, so for my first Joanna Gaines inspired farmhouse DIY, we are going to be making an awesome Gothic arch window similar in style to the ones that you'd see Joanna Gaines using in her designs. They're really fun. They can be really, really expensive. And I have designed this free printable that you can get, and I'll put the link in the description box below. And we're gonna be using this as a template. And obviously it's a little windy out here. <laughs> I believe it's 24 inches by 36. So it's a good size. All right, enough with the intro. Let's get going on our project. So. I figured we could do this one of two ways. So funny. Okay, they stop honking their horn. No! <laughs> this is gonna make a funny segment. Do you hear that? They really want somebody's attention. Oh goodness. Hopefully they're done. Okay. <laughs> Maybe they're done this time. So I figured that we could approach this one of two ways. The first way was to do the technique where we take the graphite paper and we trace this onto the board, which is a really good option. You could definitely do that, but I just thought it might be a little tricky with the size of this. I think that I have a better option and that is I am going to take some spray glue and we are going to put some spray glue on our template and actually stick our template down to the board while we jigsaw it. So we'll just peel it off afterwards and then um, do a light sanding and we're gonna put paint on it. So I think that it's gonna be okay. Oh, and by the way, I'm using MDF. You could use any kind of plywood that you want for this project. It's scrap wood that I had around. So it was free to me. I always have scraps left over for my project. So this is a really good way to use up scrap wood. There's a breeze today. This is gonna hold this in place really good. So I'm just gonna take some spray glue and just spray it onto the wood. We're just gonna let this get tacky by letting it sit for 30 seconds, kind of get rid of some of these bubbles. And it's stuck down pretty good and I'm hoping that it will work out great and at least this way with the breeze that we've got going on this won't be flying all over the place so we're going to start out by switching this bit to a drill bit so we can drill a pilot hole for our saw blade to fit through all right so to do that all we're going to do is loosen this up and we can pull that out then we're going to want to make sure the hole is fully open we can stick that right into the hole right and then i kind of hold it in place and then i pull the trigger and kind of hold it tight and that will help it kind of tighten and then you just make sure it's good and tight and then there you go and we're ready to drill some pilot holes
Now we're gonna start cutting, so you want to make sure that you have protection for your eyes, and so I always have my nice little safety glasses. Now, you may want to wear a face mask. I am in open air, there's a breeze. I think I'll be okay, and to be honest with you, I'm kind of tired of wearing face masks everywhere, but I would recommend wearing one. I'm living a little dangerously. Now we get to use our jigsaw. All you have to do is pull on the trigger. Yeah, we're powerful. <laughs> All we're gonna do is take our blade, stick it in one of these holes, and start cutting. Just keep cutting and keep cutting till we have all of the white space gone. Okay, so we've got one whole panel here, nice and clean. You can get a jigsaw starting around $30 or so. I've been using a $30 one for several years and it's been okay. Having said that, I recently upgraded to this one that I think I got on sale for around $50 and there was a tremendous difference in ease of use and quality of cut. So I would recommend spending at least that on a jigsaw. You can even go as high as $200, but this $50 one really did a great job. So you just start cutting in the jigsaw hole and then work your way over to the line and then cut along that line. When you get to the top of one of the points, stop. And then I lifted out my jigsaw and flipped the blade around and went back in the opposite direction and took it to the next corner. I kept repeating this process over and over until all of the white space was gone. With interruptions and filming, it took me about an hour and a half to cut this all out. So this is definitely a good afternoon project. So today's episode is in collaboration with Heidi Sonbull and her friend Friday DIY Hop, and I'm excited about it. So stick with me to the very end because afterwards I'm going to send you on to another amazing DIYer and they'll send you on to somebody and so on and so forth until you complete the hop. And I know you're gonna be so impressed with what you see. And I'll also leave a link to Heidi's channel in the description box below. She's awesome. I just love Heidi. She's a good friend of mine and I love participating in these hops. Here it is. Isn't that just so awesome? Our template held up really, really well. So all we need to do is kind of just remove this. This can actually be the back if we need to, but I think we'll be able to get it all off. There's a couple like little spots that are a little bit of high point. So I've got my electric sander. Makes the job go faster. I love my power tools. <laughs> so we're just gonna go ahead and sand down some of the rough spots. Apparently I'm not the only one doing construction right now, so I hope you don't mind the noise in the background. And that's okay, because I'm making noise for my neighbors. But we are done sanding and we've smoothed down some of those rough spots. I'm really happy with this. I think it looks fantastic. Now I wanna show you what's gonna take it over the edge to make it look more authentic and just more finished looking. So I picked up this PVC flat, I think it's trellis molding. And this whole eight foot section was $4. What's awesome about this is it bends. And so we are going to just nail some of this to the edge to finish it off. On a normal window, you would have some of this. And then I also had this left over from my shelf build. And so I'm gonna be putting this cause it's a little bit thicker and a little bit more sturdy on the bottom, but you could use this all the way around. So that's just up to you. But this way I can get away with just using one of these and then I can use this on the bottom. It's a little thicker, a little sturdier. It looks a little bit more like a windowsill. What we're gonna do is we're gonna very carefully and scientifically just make this touch the bottom and then we are just gonna go little by little to get our mark. And we're gonna just pinch that making it flat till we figure out where we want this. Then we're gonna take a pen and mark it 
Now, if you don't have a miter saw, that's okay. You can definitely get away with cutting this with your jigsaw. I'm just gonna use my miter saw. I'm not gonna do a tutorial on that because I've done it on other episodes, but I'm gonna pull it out because it's gonna give me a nice clean cut and that's what I'm looking for. I've got an electric staple gun. What's nice about this is it also shoots brad nails and it takes all the hard work out of it for you. These are little tiny brad nails and they're gonna be perfect for what we're doing. You just slide those in there on the side and click it into place like that. All we're gonna do is drive those nails in and then we'll do the same thing to the other side and then we'll put on the bottom piece. My heck, <laughs> I love this. And this little detail right here is making all the difference. Now I'm gonna just take it inside and paint it. To give it a little age, I just take a little sandpaper and scuff up the edges. When it's all said and done, I only spent the $4 on the trellis trim because I had everything else on hand. But if you were to recreate this look for yourself, you could definitely get the job done for under $20, maybe even less if you were able to find some free scrap wood. I couldn't be more thrilled with my end result. The next DIY that I have for you is we are going to be doing some wood candlesticks. Now, Joanna always goes out and has these wonderful artisans make her these things from scratch, and I'm sure that that is not cheap. So we're gonna fake the look. Shh, I won't tell if you don't tell. <laughs> and we are gonna use wood spindles. We're gonna just cut these in different varying sizes and lengths and then we will go from there and we'll just kind of see how it takes shape. So for my first length I'm gonna cut it off right there right at the edge of that and then I'm gonna cut it at about 18 inches so that will be right in there. It doesn't need to be exact. We're just kind of going for estimates so I'm just gonna put a mark right here. pretty good. Now we're going to take another one and we're going to turn these into like some some shorter ones. For this first one we will cut it off right there. Okay. So we'll turn this one into two. Make a mark. It doesn't need to be exact. And now for this third one, I am going to do maybe the same length as that, but it's much shorter, obviously. But we'll keep like this part the same for a little bit of consistency. Okay, so we've got these set of three different sizes. I picked these up at Hobby Lobby. They're regularly $2.99 for a set of four, and I make sure I get everything on 50% off sale or use a coupon. So we're gonna attach those to a base just so they're a little bit more sturdy. But I picked up this little bag of, it's called a wooden base. I don't know exactly what it is, but I got it at Michael's for super cheap. I didn't know what it was and I'm like, I don't know what that is, but I have to have it. Look at this. If we take this wooden base and set this on top of each one of these, upside down like that, it really looks like the top of a candlestick. I already had these on hand, but if you wanted a functioning candlestick, I would recommend picking up some wood candle cups. They have these at Michael's for such a great deal. The hole in that. That's the hole in the bottom, but I want to countersink it. I have a countersink bit around here somewhere, <laughs> but in a pinch, you can just use a bigger drill bit and just put it right on top of that hole. 
It's not as pretty of a countersink, but it'll get the job done. There we go, that's a better one. If you put it on reverse, that's what it looks like. <laughs> so that might be a good idea. Get it poking out the other side. Kind of start it by hand a little bit. Hey, that should be on there good. I just glue my decorative wood base upside down on top of my candlesticks using Gorilla wood glue and allow them fully to dry. Then I wanted to make them not look like pressure treated lumber and give them an aged look. So I took some antiquing glaze and I kind of dry brushed it on and then I took a wet paper towel and kind of wiped it down a little bit to wipe off some and smooth out some of the rough edges. I repeated this exact same process with white chalk paint over the top. The finished result totally looked aged and have this really cool patina on them. And if I ever decide to use them as an actual candlestick, I might switch out those tops with the candle cups. But all in all, I spent a total of $6 on all three candlesticks, and that's not too bad considering the Magnolia ones are over $20 a piece. Okay, so for my last Joanna Gaines inspired farmhouse DIY, say that three times fast. <laughs> We are going to be making one of her pillows that she had in one of her fixer upper houses. And on the pillow, it had the lyrics to a really meaningful song to me, You Are My Sunshine. Now, this is something that I sing to my kids all the time. I just love this song, and I thought it would be really fun to have it on a pillow. I just cut some heat transfer vinyl out on my Cricut machine in a gray color that I already had on hand. The font I used is called Calibri, making sure each line was about 16 and and a half inches wide and of course you peel back and get rid of the excess vinyl that is not needed then I separated my lines my pillow is 18 inches so I measure a 19 and a half inch square and then cut that out then I cut a 19 and a half inch wide by 25 and a half inch rectangle and then I fold that in half and cut down the middle creating two pieces you will see why in just a second I set the heat on my easy press to 330 degrees. Now you can definitely get away with using a regular iron for this as well. I start by laying out the lyrics on my pillow, making sure I find center one first and then evenly space the rest from there. I press it for about 30 seconds in sections, then I flip it over and do the back for an additional 15 seconds, and then I let it cool a bit and then I check to see my progress. I do this two more times until the vinyl is really stuck down to that canvas, then I peel it back. Okay, so I wanted to show you really quick how to make a simple envelope pillow. This is a really beginner sewing project, so this is a great place to start if you're a little nervous to sew. I've got our front. And it turned out really cute, right? But we're gonna set this aside for just a second. And I've got two pieces that are the same width as our original, but six inches longer, and I've cut it down the middle, so we've got two pieces. We're gonna start out by finishing off one edge on each one of these, and then what we're gonna do is pin it to our pillow, kind of overlapping each other, and it will just create a little pocket that we can slip a pillow into. Okay, so we're gonna just take one of the long edges and we're gonna just fold it back. If you wanna zigzag the edges, I'm never gonna tell you not to do that, but I'm not gonna do it just because I'm cheating. <laughs> you want a back stitch and then you just want to do a straight stitch. And so there you go. And then we'll do that on the other piece.
here's our top. We're gonna do corner to corner. We're gonna lay this, match up the corners, and then we're gonna take our other one and overlap it, but make sure you match up the corners. And then you've created a pocket. And then we'll just sew this all together, and then you'll have a little space to put in your pillow. Make sure you angle cut your corners before flipping it. So all we need to do is flip this right side out now. And it's pretty easy to do because we've done this little envelope. And then just make sure you push out the corners. So there you can see our little pocket and we can put our pillow in through there and our cute little pillow cover. These were leftover supplies for me from other projects, but you probably have about $5 in supplies, plus the cost of a pillow if you don't have one on hand already. Well, I like to think that Joanna watches my channel, so Joanna, if you're watching, I hope I did you proud. If you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. Also, don't forget to check out the next lady on the hop. I put her link in the description box below. And to all of my DIY Niners, Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.